Just behind me here, we've actually got a four kilowatt solar system on the top of this shed. The reason that we put solar in is we're getting charged up here around 36 cents a kilowatt. Uh, we're burning on an average of, of around 25 kilowatts per day. So therefore, uh, it's quite a fair uh, expense in electricity. Uh, the electricity that we run here is obviously the geothermal heating and cooling, plus the normal operations of the house, plus some pumps for and uh, the septic system and, and general use of appliances. So um, basically, uh, any farm can put a solar system on. And again, you're looking at cost savings, and there's huge cost savings because we've actually, uh, uh, with with putting the solar in, averaged around about a 60 to 70 percent uh, usage decrease on electricity per day. In Victoria, you uh, generate around about three and a half hours of, uh, of electricity across the 365 days a year. So therefore, what we also do too is we time the appliances. So if we're putting large appliances on like dishwashers, washing machines, vacuum cleaners, we do that in that peak time when the sun's out. And again, it's just another smart way of reducing electricity costs on your farm. The geothermal system, as we spoke about before, uh, is a system that actually runs on electricity, but it's only very small amounts of electricity because it's only a quarter horsepower motor and you've got a very, very small pump to pump the water around. So therefore, the natural thing to do is put solar in to actually offset the cost of running the geothermal system that heats and cools the house. We're looking at the heart of the geothermal system here in this little valley. Basically what we've got is we've got a loop configuration uh, and we've got four trenches that are about 1.8 metres deep. At the bottom of each trench we've got uh, class 12 25 millimetre pipe and that's the closed loop system that actually runs the, the hot and cold water through the ground for the, uh, the heat and cooling transfer. And down the bottom as well we've got the dam as you can see and there's loops in the dam that actually uh, feed the geothermal system too. But again we're not using water, all we're doing is heat transferring and using the ground uh, as, a, uh, as a, a heat transfer to actually make the geothermal system a lot more efficient. All right, we're down here at the moment, and this is the uh, the bottom dam. We've got the dwelling up the top there. The uh, the geothermal system actually has a pipe system that actually runs down this valley here, and the closed loop water system actually ends up um, transferring the the heat or the, the hot and cold water, uh, and it's thermally conducted into the dam here. And that's how the geothermal system actually works. Um, we're not actually using water in any way, shape or form, but we're just using the dam as a thermal transfer to actually make the geothermal system so much more uh, affordable and effective as a heating and cooling system. The geothermal system is used again to heat and cool the house uh, across the year and we have temperature extremes up here of basically uh, plus 45 degrees Celsius down to minus 7. We've actually had snow here as well. Uh, the, uh, the system also too, this module here, uh, is actually the module that heats the potable hot water. So that's basically a byproduct of uh, the geothermal system. So the potable hot water is almost a free product uh, that you can uh, you use as your, your hot water for your showers and uh, dishes, etc. And uh, over to our left over here, we will have a swimming pool at some point as well. And the byproduct of geothermal again is actually heating and cooling, or well, not so much cooling, uh, but you can do it in summer, uh, heating more so the, uh, the swimming pool. All of the, uh, the water that comes out of this and all of the function of the geothermal system uh, is not adverse to the elements. So if you've got a very, very hot day or a very, very cold day, no matter what, that geothermal through the, uh, the heat transfer through the dam that you saw before and through the ground in the valley comes back at a constant temperature of 16.7 to 16.8 degrees, making it extremely efficient. Now again, as I mentioned before, this actually runs on electricity and the solar system offsets the, uh, the cost of running this, but the running costs are extremely minimal. There are also many other applications for the, uh, the geothermal systems. Now the way that this is heated is actually using a duct air ducting system. Uh, so heating and cooling the house uh, is actually um, via ducting, but you can also use hydronics as well. So you can actually pump hot and cold water out of this system to actually use hydronics for heating and cooling the dwelling. Um, but there are a lot of applications and especially for farming. Uh, if you've got piggeries or chicken farms where you're actually uh, running um, hot water through a slab and you're using hydronics, especially for piggeries. Uh, I've heard of some piggeries um, getting charged around $300,000 a year in LPG. Now, um, this system is so easy to install. It's just basically an excavator, and if you're a farmer that's got an excavator and you haven't got too much rock, you can uh, drop um, 
uh, pipes into trenches and do it yourself, or you can use the dam that's already on your property as well. So um, uh, for cost savings, especially if you're using LPG where natural gas is not available for heating, uh, you can have a payback of around uh, six to 12 months in putting a geothermal system in. So again, making your farm sustainable and using technologies that are out there. And unfortunately, geothermal has not really taken off in Australia, uh, definitely in Europe, all across Europe and Canada mainly, uh, in very cold areas, geothermal is used widely. But uh, in Australia, unfortunately, it hasn't taken off. And I hope to see uh, uh, these geothermal technologies um, taking off in many ways because of the, the cost savings. Renewable energy makes sense if you spend a lot on electricity and gas. In Wayne's case, he spent $100 per week on LPG. Also, if you can get at least 4 hours per day electricity production from your solar panels, you can mimic some of Wayne's savings. Geothermal may also work for you if you have access to water for the heat transfer and your land isn't too rocky. If so, the investment in renewable energy could pay off in one to two years from electricity and gas cost savings. Renewable energy can also provide a useful hedge against rising electricity and gas prices. Gas especially is expected to increase because of the opening of liquefied natural gas or LNG export terminals in Queensland. With renewable energy, you can reduce your exposure to volatile energy prices by producing some of your own energy at zero marginal cost. The greater your bill now, the more you save with a move to renewables.